Absolutely. Welcome back. Job. If you've just joined us, we are about to get semi-final number two back underway. Here's what unfolded in the first half of the exchange between Koloa and Dino and Felipe Toledo. No major scores locked in just yet, Pots. Yeah, both guys kind of sort of maybe a little nervous of what was going on out in the water. Obviously a bit of a feeding frenzy, so both guys are a little rattled that uh, Toledo with the pick of the bunch at the moment, 6.33 due to that turn right there. Starting to find his feet out here at main break, Margaret River, Ronnie, and uh, looking comfortable. Looking comfortable, getting some solid finishes on the inside. Also losing a bit of bark here as he brought this one right through to that oncoming section. Felipe looking sharp out in front at this stage. And this is, uh, I believe, earlier on too. 3.17 for this wave, so hasn't yet found a solid score to go with the 6.33. And then we had this unfold, just a, a huge school of fish chasing a, a bait ball through the lineup. A bit of action out there, and the WSL commissioner's office acting swiftly along with the head judge to get the surfers out of the lineup. And we spent quite a bit of time assessing conditions, making sure that marine life had moved on before Richie Porter made the call to get the competitors back in this lineup. Yeah. Now these bait balls, they don't stay in one place, do they? They kind of move up and down the coast and uh, they kind of had to wait till that thing moved. Surfer with red has priority, Toledo and the lead. And we restart the heat, Ronnie, 15 minutes remaining. kaloe has got to try and find that form that took him to the, the semi-final here. Wave selection was at a premium against Geordie Smith, which is what got him the win. Let's see if he can find that form again. Looking for a 6.33. Hasn't really connected with a quality wave just yet. He's taken a couple that have faded away. So let's see what unfolds here. As you can see, beautiful conditions for finals day. We've already seen some big heat score totals. Some of the waves of the event ridden today. John Florence with a great heat score total, 19 points plus in his semi-final heat. Kolohe coming off the back of an 18.71 heat score total. And searching for the lead now. Dropping into this one. Banking off the bottom and in this first section, nice swoop. And some added aggression as he came out of that turn. Again, he's picking these ways up that just flatten out a little bit. But this one's going to line up once again on the inside. Doesn't have a lot of speed to throw up. A decent turn to finish this one. But it'll be his best wave. Yeah, sitting on a 3-1-7 as his top score, so just needed to get the ball rolling. Good move there. Realising uh, Felipe had priority, so pulled the trigger on a smaller inside wave. Nice opening turn, though. So it's going to be... He'll get a fairly chunky score just from that one manoeuvre. Didn't quite connect on the inside. And Dino's previous finishes here at Marga River 2016. He was in the quarters, so going one better. But it's had a couple of early round losses as well. 13 and a half minutes to go. And numbers starting to roll through for that last ride. An impressive first turn. Unfortunately for Kolohe, that wave just didn't line up and give him anything high impact on the inside. Yeah, just a smaller inside one. Nice opening maneuver there. Beautiful body tilt. Got that board all the way back around. But then as you said, Ronnie, kind of went a little flat, a little bit of downtime through this midsection. This is where he had to bide his time and really make sure he connected with the end section and didn't quite get that uh, resistance that he was looking for. Live action out the back. Felipe on a good looking set wave. He's going to drive up into this first section. Solid transition turn. Kept that down the line flow to keep some speed for this second move. Just working out a couple of re-entries off the top and a drawn out cut, cut back carve to finish. Ricardo cheering on his boy. And that should get rid of the 3.17. Toledo is going to be holding on to the lead when this second score comes through, but Kolohe is about to put his best number up. This heat's going to get interesting. Yeah, before that last exchange, Kolohe looking for a 6.33. Toledo is going to better his situation as well, so we'll see Chloe come close to that score. Let's have a look at Toledo's wave, a little bit bigger. 
mid-face turn to get around this first section. First turn, very important, jams it in the pocket there, beautiful speed check turn. And then it kind of went a little fat as well, Ronnie, as it came through that inside bolt. A nice little jam in the pocket, driving off that inside rail. And it pulls that one off, so bettering is 317. I love that mid-face turn, he read that way really well. Kind of stayed high, kept his speed, and then just did that nice little jam. Didn't quite bring the board all the way back around. Saw that wave start to stand up and needed to get around that next section. It is a tricky wave to surf. It's kind of one of those waves you've got to let it do its thing and then just react as it does. And as you said, Chloe dropped his best score. 5.67 for Andino. We're still waiting on the scores to come through for Felipe's last ride. Been a tough event for him in the past. But looking at a third at worst in 2017. Meanwhile, Kolohe up once again. Chasing down that number one position. Another strong opening move. Let's see if this one gives him more on the inside. Setting it up. Lines up that beautiful high line floating re-entry. Kind of really pushed on the tail midway through that turn. Making it look more high impact than maybe it was. Yeah, that was good surfing from Kolohe started the wave well and then finished strong so that's going to definitely be his best score slowly on the improve 5.67 so looking for a 3.84 we're still waiting for felipe's last ride to get locked in felipe looking to replace a 317 and it's, it's starting to feel like these two surfers are, are really settling into this battle i think we're going to see some bigger numbers drop in the final 10 minutes here yeah, I think that uh, obviously nature's calmed down a little bit and we, uh, these guys can uh, focus on the job at hand. Surf is starting to pump. Right? Well, let's see what Felipe can do with this section. Just banking uh, off that first pocket, out onto the open face, a beautiful wall to play with. And there is the section he was looking for. And he goes all out. Tries to keep his board under his feet on the closeout but can't quite stick it. Kind of took a while to find that magic move. Had he made the float, I think he would have really saved that rider and maybe pushed his total a little higher. His previous wave came through at a 4.67. Left hander Andino looking for a 5.34. Waiting on his numbers to drop. Yeah, I think Chloe's going to get that. I think that's uh, a no-brainer, but um, it all comes down to what Felipe gets. Can he get the lead back, and what would that requirement be? Had he finished that last maneuver, though, that was going to go up into the excellent range. I thought he did some great surfing on that. There was a turn midway through that we haven't seen yet. Off the bottom, sort of jam in the pocket, didn't really connect the way he wanted to. This is nice here, just holds the rail all the way through. And then this turn, I think, is where the money comes from. Bang, just quick snap in the pocket then goes for it just a little bit off balance there that could have been a great score you can see the lump and bump running as he hits it he didn't quite maybe get as high up on it over the top as he wanted to it goes comes down sideways great score for chloe he takes the lead can toledo get it back we see some hectic wipeouts there on that inside you could see that water was coming together with a lot of power Felipe did his best, but just lost contact with that lip. That's the wind coming into play. Well, you know, sometimes you're waiting for that wave to feed back at you and, and give you that resistance, and there wasn't any. And I don't think that um, whether it was he didn't hit it correctly or he was, wasn't was quite high enough up onto the lip, but he was he was expecting that wave to really push back at him, and it, and it kind of didn't. So threw him off balance a little bit. We had a feeling Kolohe would enjoy that little break in that heat just an opportunity to reset work out a game plan going into the back half of the heat mike parsons his dad dino and dino former to a surfers have a lot of experience and felipe's got that working for him too his dad ricardo competing at the elite level but i just feel like that break has served kolohe very well a 7.83 on his last ride he's building nicely through this heat and Felipe now back in second spot looking for a 7.18 had he stuck the float on that last ride he'd been he'd been front right now yeah exactly 
So important, isn't it? You do all the hard work and then not complete your ride. It's, uh, you know, it's, but that's, uh, that's surfing, isn't it? Well, just under seven minutes to go and uh, the little break obviously got our surfers out of harm's way. But it's also worked in their favour too with the conditions improving Strada Wasilewski. Yes, it has, Ronnie. The waves out here looking absolutely perfection right now. You can just come up into the ball and just give it everything you've got. There is still a nice light offshore breeze, but it's just groomed the face. So the big ribs aren't really going through it as much as they were. So you kind of get up in there and you can really go top to bottom. Whereas, uh, you know, earlier this morning, we saw a lot of that driving down into the bowl, which still, I think, lends itself to this way. But these guys both can go into the lift, which they love to do. Maybe we'll see some of that high flying action. Bring it on. Definitely some uh, cleaner sections for our competitors. Thanks for the update, Strider. We're enjoying getting your insights in the thick of it out there at the moment. Six minutes to go here, and Dino leads. And Felipe is chasing a 7.18. Yeah, plenty of time, Ronnie. Just under six minutes. Kaloe with priority. Bunch of sets coming through. Exciting stuff. And now it's up to which wave you choose. That's the important part. Yeah, Dino using priority for this one. Trying to get rid of a 5.67 here. Nice looking wall standing up in front of him. Clean gaff. And as he drives up into the lip once again, another arc. And a third, so this wave providing quite a bit of wall, a bit of repetition in the approach. Finishes with a float on the inside. Yeah, smart surfing from Kaloe, just using his priority. Five, six, seven is what he's got to better. So if he can just keep chipping away and increase that score line that's required by Felipe, that's his job done. I think we've seen it in the past. Uh, surfers put together a, a special performance like John had in the last round. Someone on the bottom half of the draw is, is basically trying to match that and, and surf almost against the competitor that they're, they're not even in the water with. <laughs> but it seems like these two surfers are on pace. Kalohe not pushing himself, himself too hard on that last ride. Just wants to better the 5-6-7. But Felipe with a good look at wall here now. He gets an opportunity to respond with some rail work of his own. Bringing it through to the inside. Nice swoop there. And places that last turn so well. Such a difficult section to read. He gets it right this time. And it's uh, it's going to be interesting because Kaloe's last ride should be pretty solid. Yeah, definitely well, better than his five, six, seven. You think? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's going to. I think Toledo's going to need a, a mid to high range seven, which is, which is going to be close. I mean, there was three big, beautiful swooping turns. Finished off strong. Good, so, good, solid wave as well. Nice, clean surfing, which is hard to do out here. You heard Strata talk about those ribs are gone, so the guys can lay into their turns a bit better. That's three solid turns here. A little bit of variety. And then this right here, nice critical finish. Kind of threw it out, didn't he? Got that resistance that he was looking for and finished off. That felt good for Felipe. Nice, solid wave. Good, smooth, clean surfing, and uh, I think the judges are going to like that. It all comes down to what uh, Kaloe did on his last wave. There's the variety we talk about. Just giving it that extra little tweak, letting those fins free at the end of that turn. And then right here, throwing that board out, getting the wow. resistance required. That was a critical finish right there. It was really similar, a little bit smaller than his previous effort to finish a ride off. But that time, where he couldn't find that, that lip to connect with halfway down the, the free fall last time, he found it transition to the almost the, the impacting white water and found his board under his feet yeah it's great surfing and this one from uh, from Kaloe as well solid climbing moves very similar ways and then that uh, that that sort of foam climb flow to finish so pretty similar waves right there maybe the edge uh, to Toledo for the finish a little bit more dynamic but yeah, Kaloe's going to lock in another good score and Toledo's going to need a bomb. So numbers coming through and Dino getting rid of the 7 point, sorry, the 5.67 and replacing it with the 7.8. So now Felipe needs a 9.3 from that last ride. Just over two minutes ago, scores coming through are looking solid. And it's an 8.67, so not enough to turn it, but he's narrowed the requirement. 
Chasing a 6.96 now. So Chloe with priority. It's going to be a crazy two minutes for him. He's got to just drop the anchor. Cozy up right next to Felipe. And uh, use that priority to great effect. Toledo's job now is to try and find something in the next minute and 45. He's only needing a 6.96. Two judges went up into the nines on that last wave from Toledo. Three eight fives averaged out an 8.67, the highest score of the heat, but the backup is the problem. Here comes another wave, Ronnie. Kaloe with priority. Is he going to take it? Is he going to let Toledo go? Getting himself into position for this one. And he's going to swing. Looking left for a moment, but ops right. Fades back. Wants to get a critical hit in here. Nice big swoop. Drifts that tail and loses control on the exit of that turn. One minute to go. Door open for Felipe. Let's see if he can stroll through. He needs a big number. The highest, well, not the highest scoring ride, just a 6.96. Yeah, it's still a solid score. It's a tricky one too. It's not. It's not an eight. You know, it's not a five. It's like right in the middle there. So, what kind of wave is it going to re require? You know, what kind of turns does he need to go to? Does he, does he risk it at the end or does he safety it to finish it off? It's one of those really tricky scores. So basically, serving for an eight, really, just to make sure of it. You don't want to uh, leave any doubt in the judges' minds. Thirty seconds to go. Got priority. And looking like he might be making a move. Not the biggest set waves we have seen, but he's getting himself into a position now. This will be his last shot at it. 15 seconds to go. He can't get into this one. 10 seconds. Is there something out the back? Standing up. The onside announcer counting this one down. Felipe. I don't think he's going to get to his feet in tight pots. He's not even going to get a shot at it. And Kolohe and Dino. Pairing up a couple of seven pointers. And he's going to finish again with a switch foot effort <laughs> through to the inside. So, showing his back, back end form. These amateur rivals, Kalohe and Dino and John Florence, will fight it out for the title here at the Drug Aware Market River Pro for 2017. It should be an epic battle. Kolohe kind of just quietly plowing his way through the bottom half of the draw. There's a couple of happy campers right there. Dino and Dino there and Mike Parsons, Kolohe's camp. But yeah, Kolohe just charging through the bottom half of the draw quietly. John Florence making a, a lot of noise and just stealing the spotlight in the top half of the draw. Should be an epic fight. Yeah, he's had three hits in the 19 plus points <laughs> so he's going to be a tough one to beat Kolo is going to have to be on the good waves he's going to have to pick the eyes out of it put the pressure on straight away but he's in good form Ronnie uh, just that that heat was kind of strange due to the, the stop start and it was a guys, close one yep, that. yeah absolutely it was uh, there was not much in it that's for sure came down to Felipe's backup was uh, in the six point range and we've always talked about that once you're in the semi-finals you need a couple of excellent rides to move through well the break working well for Kaloa and Dino and he'll get to the beach reset quickly get a game plan together that's going to give him the best opportunity to overcome the surfer of the contest and we'll be diving into all the highlights from the quarterfinals onward after the break in our pre-final show, Peter Mel's going to join us. Don't go anywhere. More to come in just a moment. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.